But people on the outside, they can see it. We just flowing in and we don't even know the blessing is on us and we got the favor of God. And, and some of us won't embrace it because, you know, we just going along to get along. But, man, I want all that God has for me. I want all of it. I don't want to leave nothing out. Amen. I don't want to get somewhere and say I was supposed to have this. I want to get everything God has for me. Amen. And, and, and I want to, and see, like I told God, I, I told God he can trust me. You know, uh, um, Floyd Mayweather giving people a million dollars here and there. I told him, God can give me a million. I know what to do with it. Some of y'all, he can't trust y'all, man. Y'all want y'all stop coming to church. <laughs> I don't feel good. You know, you, you just got too much money, you know. Be on vacation and all that. Man, you better get your priorities together. I'm telling you, I've been teaching you for years the way to stay blessed. I don't care how low my substance has been. I've never been without. I just stopped using so much. I miss that. Come on. You can't live a, a, like a millionaire when you, when you don't give like a millionaire. It's a principle, amen. But uh, I'm going to get into the word, amen. I know y'all ready. Y'all look hungry, amen. Psalms 23, verse number 1. We're going to read all the way down to verse number 6. Very familiar passage of scripture. A lot of you all read it and you know it by heart. But I wonder, have you ever taken the time out to study it? For the Bible tells us in, in, in 2 Timothy, I think it's 2 and 15, to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. This text, if we don't get it, we're going to be some shameful believers. This very passage of scripture. How many of y'all used to say this when you was a kid? You know, Lord, in my shepherd, I should not want. You just know it all the way to the end and memorize it, but don't know the content of it, the content of the context. Amen. The context of the text. Amen. Let's go. The Lord, the Lord, let's read verse number one together. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He making me to lie down in green pastures. He leading me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Watch this, and I will dwell. It starts with a declaration, and it ends with the positioning of the believer to get all that said in, all the te in this text. And we look at this thing, it's talking about a flow of God, the flow of God. Everybody say the flow of God. Flow of God. And this morning, we're getting ready to teach on getting into the flow of God, getting into the... My wife talked the other night on the overflow, but you can't get to the overflow to get in the flow. Everybody, everybody wants the overflow. They want everything to come upon them and overtake them. But there's some prerequisites that you have to, to, to attain and get to for the overflow to come in your life. First, we got to start flowing. Amen? While we're standing, let's pray. Father, we thank and praise you now for the opportunity. God, you've given us to share this, your word with your people. We believe, God, this is the word you've ordained for the hour. And God, as we submit ourselves to you, we give up our will for your will, our desires for yours. We say we make ourselves one with you. God, we say less of us and, and more of you, God, none of us and all of you. Father, as you have given us the, this tongue to speak, to, to, to decree and declare, we decree and declare that you have gathered a people who have ears to hear, hearts to receive, but most of all spirits to contain your word. By this word, God, we shall be empowered. God, we shall go forth and do great exploits. We decree now, God, that because of this word, we shall not be the same. Give us revelation, God, freely. God, revelation, but yet in simplicity. And Satan, we bind you, we serve notice on you even now. That you will not interrupt this word. You will not have no interference in this service. We put our foot on your head right now. For we know your place as it pertains to us as believers. You're under our feet. We take authority over every controlling spirit. And we decree that Jesus is Lord over this place. We thank you now. We praise you in your son Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. 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 Getting into the flow of God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. It's, time. it's time 
to get in the flow. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Let me get that, that podium. Glory. Let's leave it. I'm going to walk. Just going to walk. I just feel the need to walk it. Ah, yeah, I'm going to walk this thing out. When we started teaching a few weeks ago on, on exposing, dealing with the spirit of a fault finder, and we discovered that this spirit of the fault finder is birthed out of a person or out of the spirit or out of the spirit of offense. When people are offended, amen, it's not hard for them to find fault with other people. And when we're offended, amen, we go into a, a recess mode or we go into a mode where we don't fully hear the voice of God. We start operating in our emotions. We start doing things, amen. Most times, people that find fault are trying to get even. A lot of times when we become fault finders out of offense, amen, we look for anyone that we can take our, our frustrations out on. We look for folk, amen, we can point the finger at, not knowing that we're blaming ourselves. We won't take uh, uh, accountability for the offense. And, and when God was dealing with me about this message, he told me to say to those that are offended, not that he's been insensitive. Some of y'all getting already getting tired. He said, just get over the offense. Because, amen, the Bible said, blessed is he who is not offended in me. So if I'm in Christ, we got to understand, he say, amen, blessed are ye when men should revile and persecute you and say all men of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. In other words, just being in Christ, the Bible says, they that live godly shall do what? Suffer persecution. And if you live in the way God wants you to live, every now and then you're going to go through something. But what's happening is we're, playing more, we're paying more attention to what the enemy is doing to us. We can't see what God want to do through us. Pastor said a word the other night, amen, and, and it really set on me. And I want y'all to get this. He said, don't get so caught up in what you're going through. Focus more on where you're going to. Don't get so caught up on what you're going through. Focus more on where you're going to. Why do I need to focus on where I'm going to? Because Je Jeremiah 29 and 11, God said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. He said, they're thoughts of good and not of evil to give you an expected end and a hope in your final outcome. In other words, God said, I know how the end of your situation is supposed to turn out. But if you keep on looking at what you're going through, everybody shout through. Look at somebody and say, you better be going through some things. Ask them, say, are you going through something right now? How many of y'all in a situation right now and what you're going through, if you can just get in there and fix it right now, you'll be done with it. Come on, if you can just get in there and fix some stuff right now, you're, you're, you know, you can lay hands on somebody and they can be healed or you can get in your financial situation and it'll be done with. Amen. You're trying to rush a process so you can get past it, so you can get over this stuff. God says some stuff we just got to go through. We get caught up in what we're going through. We get so focused on what we're dealing with. We can't see where we're going. Some things, and I would, I would dare to venture to say most things that we're dealing with, they don't come to take us out. Come on. I believe, just me, you know, I'm a church boy now. I've been you know, getting a little wiser. I believe that some of the challenges that come at us, they come to make us better. Yeah. Yeah. I even believe, I would dare so far as to go as, when sickness touches our bodies, it is an opportunity for us to decree and declare the word of God over our own bodies. If we trust God, if we can trust God to, to lay hands and pray for somebody else, why well, we can't trust God to lay hands and pray for, for ourselves? I learned a long time ago, when I feel a pain, man, I, ain't got, I, don't, have, I don't have time sometimes to call somebody and say, pray with me or pray for me. When the Bible tells me he was wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities, the chastisement of my peace was upon him, and with his stripes I was healed. It don't say, uh, I'm going to be, it said, I was healed. It said, you were healed. So if this is an already thing, it's already done, all I have to do is position myself to receive it. When we're in the Lord, we got some benefits. Glory to God. We got some benefits. Somebody say, I'll get in the flow, get in the flow. When we talk about getting in the flow of God, in order to get in the flow of God, you got to get past yourself. Somebody shall get past yourself. Yes. Tell your neighbor again, say, you're your worst enemy. Y'all not tell them like y'all want to. Y'all scared? Talk to, the one, talk to the one you're not scared of. Tell them, say, you're your worst enemy. 
Tell me, say, it's not me. It's not me. When you get mad at me, it's just a spirit. It's a spirit come up on me. I get a little crazy sometimes. No, it's not me. It's a spirit. You trying to take it out on me. Get past you. Get past you. The flow. We must get a clear working definition of what the flow of God really is. We talk about flow. When we look at the word flow, we can talk about something that moves along in a stream. The stream flows. We can talk about something that's continuous and moves smoothly. But when I talk about this flow today, I'm talking about the flow of God. Amen. Y'all got my, my, my nose back there? Sound boo? Hallelujah. Getting into the flow. Put them things up there for me. That, that definition. Glory to God. Flow. Everybody shout flow. flow. To flow means to, to issue or proceed from a source. To issue or proceed from a source. Flow. Everybody say it again. Flow. flow. The flow of God. Something that proceeds or is issued from God. Would y'all agree that God is your source? Anybody believe that God is their source today? Not your job. Your job is a resource, and we got it twisted because we'll give more reverence to our job than we do to God. Amen. And we give more, rest, more reverence to, amen, the created thing, the thing rather than the creator. Oh when in our actuality, the creator created the thing that you're depending on. Yeah. If you put the creator back in his rightful place, you will know that your job can change at any time. You get so caught up in your job and forget about God, thinking your job is your source and your job is not your source. You can go to work one day and they just let you go for no reason at all and we don't need you no more and then you don't have anything else because you've been depending on your job because you have confused your job as being your source when it is only a resource. God put people in your life to be resources or directional points to resources. But we get caught up in people. We admire people. We want to be like folks instead of finding and get with God and find out who God wants us to be. Your job is not your source. Amen. It is a resource to flow, to issue or proceed. Underline that word proceed, proceed, proceed. From a source, underline source. Hmm. It also says to circulate. Y'all mind about teaching a little bit? Everybody say circulate. circulate. Now the words we're using here that are standing out to me are flow, proceed, source, and circulate. It's going to be better than y'all agree, and I know it. I already preach it to myself. Proceed means to carry on or to continue any action or process. So whatever is coming from God, I want it to carry on. I don't want it to stop. I don't want it to be interrupted. I want what God is doing in my life to be perpetual, uninterrupted, continual. Amen. Not these things, amen, the enemy is throwing at me because he's throwing darts and he's supposed to do that. He's interrupting our flow sometimes because we're giving him attention when we shouldn't be. <laughs> The devil laughing at some of us. God trying to bless you. You looking at what he's doing. He's a distraction. He used people to be a distraction. Proceed means to carry on or continue an action or process. The source. This word source. Underline source again now. The beginning or place of origin. It is the, like God said, he is the alpha and the omega. He meant he is the source. The source is the beginning or place of origin. Watch this. It is a supply of something we cannot produce on our own. Source, the beginning, or a place of origin. I'll get y'all these notes so we can just fly a little bit. It is a supplier of something that we cannot produce on our own. God is my source. Everybody say, God is my source. Watch this. You can't produce healing on your own. God is my source. You cannot produce deliverance. On your own, it comes from my source. Amen. You can't get salvation on your own. It all comes from your source. When I discover what my source, where my healing comes from, where my prosperity comes from, and I know it's not from my job, it's not from the doctors, amen, I know that God is my source, I go to my source to get what I need. Somebody say, he's your source. I love my wife, but I'm not her source. She's not my source. 
She cook good for me, but she's not my source. She do all the things I need done, but she's not my source. I'm going somewhere with this, y'all. Because when we start putting stuff out of place, we put it in the place of our source. When that thing is gone, we left empty. We left blind. And we left like we're handicapped because we depended so much. We got attached to people more than we are attached to God. Are y'all still here? Amen. How many of you have left, had somebody walk out of your life or your, your, your source of living was interrupted? And you didn't know how. Anybody ever been to a position and things were going good, amen, you were doing so well, then something happened, and you, the first thing you say, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Yes. Have you ever stopped and said, God, what am I going to do now? Yes. They don't let me go, Lord Jesus, what am I going to do now? They're closing the company now, what am I going to do? I'm going to depend on my source. On, the hardest thing to get believers to do is to embrace the fact that God is their source. Because we go to the Bible saying all that ways, talk to me, acknowledge him, and he shall do what? So when I start getting to a situation, I don't know what's going on, I need to acknowledge him, wait for instructions. When he directs my path, even though my path might be a little hard the way he's telling me to go, because sometimes God's going to tell you some stuff that don't agree with how you feel. Sometimes we get in a tough spot. We like to think of ways to get around it, and we still go to God about it. Yeah. And when God gives us instructions, you're like, God, that ain't really what the, well, I ain't want to do it like that right there. I, I, I think if I go this way. And God give you a strategy. God give you what you need, but you still come up with your own strategy because you can see it for yourself. God will show you some stuff. But you say it's going to take you too long to get there. Come on. <laughs> I'm going to believe God. I'm going to sow a seed on it. I'm going to say it, say it, say it till I see it, see it, see it. But God said, first you got to submit. Well, I don't really want to submit. First you got to get healed. You, you hurt. You can't get where you did because you hurt. Well, I still want to hold on to the Lord. All that ways. Why do we we guarantee? My way look a little bit. I know if this come up. Come on, we start having A and B solutions. God will tell you exactly what he wants. I'm gonna work out. I'm gonna try. Why? Why I'm gonna try something else? I'm gonna keep on doing what he told me to do. Why? Because if it's his plan, Amen. He is the source. He's the one, Amen. That's responsible for it coming to pass. I'm just a tool that he's using. Seek ye the Lord while he might way be found. Call ye upon him while he's near. The Bible says, "Let the wicked forsake his way, and unrighteous man his thought let him return unto the Lord, for he will abundantly pardon." In other words, we get return. I got some stuff for you. Somebody say, God got something for me. Dreamers in here, any, any big dreamers, that, that any people, anybody got this mentality that, that where you're at right now, that this too shall pass, amen, amen, that the suffering of this present time not worthy to be compared to the glory, they're going to be revealed. This, you got to get a mentality that say, God got me in it, I'm just going to go ahead and go through it. Ain't we caught in it? I'm going to flow through this thing. I'm going to get caught with what I'm going through. Because I know where I'm going to. Right. I've seen examples, and God has shown it to me. Debt free. Mm. Flow through it. Let's read this together. It says, What? The Lord. You everybody here? The Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. Not is going to be, is. Is his presence here going to be, is. My shepherd, my leader, my guide. He, he the one that guides me. He making me lie down in green water. Wow. Then he restores to lie down. When too much other stuff is in there, when I got my religion there, you can't rest in it. I'm a head of God. He leads me. his faith. You don't got Alexis maintenance. Come on, y'all. It's, it's some stuff going with this. All right, then. And then they say, yea, though I walk. Ask some neighbor, say, why are you stopped in the middle of your situation? Just stay there. Listen to this joker going through. Y'all know how massages do you. Relax you. Come on, y'all. And then we got a lot of us relaxed. We think it's just supposed to be like this. I live lack. This is but you got there and start looking at what you're going and forgot what you was going. And so we did, and the devil massaging us. 
And so he create new arguments every day. Come on, y'all. He wants you to get discouraged when you can't find the job you want. And you start saying what he say. That you ain't going to never make it. Nobody in your family never did. You start listening to all this stuff. And sooner or later, your prayers change. You say, well, but God got me in this for a reason. God ain't got you in it. You just, you were supposed to go through it. But you got stuck. I will feel no evil for thou art. They comfort me. The rod for correction is still for guidance. The word comes to correct. The word comes to guide. Y'all still with me? Watch this. We're going to read this in the, new, in the God word translation. Sister Kim, you got that? Hallelujah. The God word translation. You want me to start from the beginning, sir? Yeah, Psalms 23, 1, and six, 1 through 6. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is. He's still. Watch this. Read. I, I, Father, he's my source. Watch. Read. He makes me. out. Oh. When last time you could. He leads me beside peaceful waters. Come on, read. He renews my soul. Somebody say he renews my soul. He renews my soul. Read. He guides me along the paths of righteousness. You know, if I'm being guided by a shepherd, read. Go ahead and read. For the sake of his name. For the sake of his name. Somebody says not even for you. Of, even though I walk through this valley, through this valley experience, amen, he get up and he started getting on point, I can start turning him to where I want him to go because the shepherd guided the sheep the way he wanted him to go. A lot of us, when the shepherd put his staff on, why is it he can turn?